Walter Ash to the Crafty Catalog. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, The Crafty Catalog. It's Misha Amy. I'm Amy, and today I am going to be talking about the Irish fair folk, the good neighbours, Mandini Maha. We'll get into it, but we're not going to be mentioning the F word much. So, in case you're wondering what the F word is, it's fairies. And I'll explain why we're not going to be using that word much in this video. A little bit later. When people think of fairies, a lot of people think of twee little tiny tinkerbells with wings that are super friendly, that like playing games, that have like magical fairy dust. That's not what I'm going to be talking about today. The kind of fairies that you're probably used to talking about and the type of fairies that you have in your mind are most likely an English Victorian concept that is not akin to the Irish fair folk, good folk, the she, the H she. I'll get into all their names in a little while but first I want to talk about what exactly I'm talking about in this video. So in this video I'm going to go through five fundamentals of Irish fair folk because number one I like alliteration and number two, I have to cap it somewhere because literally there is so much information out there that you could spend hours talking about it, hours going into detail on specific types of she or the good neighbours. So I'm just going to make it very, very simple, break down the fundamentals and hopefully you'll have a better understanding at the end of the video. So fair folk fundamental number one are the different types of beings. So first on my list here to talk about is the puka. Now the puka appears in many different stories and folklore, typically as a small kind of wrinkly old man with a pipe, usually dressed in black, usually sitting on a stoop or sitting just at the side of the road. Travellers will come along him and maybe he'll give them wrong directions. Maybe he'll get them to do something. Maybe he'll play a trick on them. He's a bit of a trickster, but he can also be very helpful. So how he tricks is, as I said, he'll give our directions. He'll get someone to do something. Often when he appears in animal form, so when he appears as a horse or a goat or something like that, he will trick someone into taking a spin on his back. And when you do that, he generally runs off with you and doesn't let you off and then throws you into a ditch or into a field or somewhere. He can be helpful and there is folkloric evidence of the puka helping around the house with some housework, on farms, on farmland. So maybe if you get him in a good mood he can be helpful but just to be aware that he's also a bit of a trickster. So the next being I'm going to talk about is the banshee. Now, this is a fairly commonly and very well known being, and there are some misconceptions about the banshee as well. So, banshee in Irish, uh, or shivan is also uh, another way of saying it. A ban is a woman, and a she is a fairy. A banshee is a fairy woman, just to make it kind of simple. The banshee usually presents herself as a young or old woman dressed in white, grey or black. Often people have a misconception that she causes death when in actual fact she forewarns about death or foreshadows death. So the banshee is usually associated with a specific number of families. There are certain families uh, with certain surnames in Ireland that will have a banshee associated with them and often the banshee will be heard crying at the time of death or just before the time of death of someone in the family. Now there's also a lot of other folklore stories and bits of information associated with the banshee. I would have grown up with this particular bit of information being told to me and since I've started researching all the folklore around these beings have found that it's not only my family that was telling the story but it was many other families around Ireland and there was many other people that had this belief and held this belief as well. So 
The banshee is often seen with a comb. With a comb. So she'll have her comb, she will be brushing her hair with the comb. Sometimes she'll be wailing, keening, crying, kind of lamenting. And sometimes she'll just be brushing her hair. Something I was always told growing up was if you see a comb when you're walking out on the street, never pick the comb up. Leave it there, don't touch it. This also for me, and for what I was told growing up, extended to hair ties, clips, anything to do with your hair that you saw outside. Do not pick it up. Do not put it in your hair. If you bring it home and don't use it on your hair, she will tend to come and take it from you or come to get it from you by knocking at your window that night. If you use it on your hair, and now this was what I was told growing up, if you use it on your hair, she will come and she will take you. That's pretty terrifying, to be honest. Um, there are folkloric accounts of the banshee following someone home on that evening or that night, looking for her comb back. And also there are accounts of people trying to give her the comb back by using tongs, like iron tongs that you would use for the fire and handing her the, handing her the comb in the pin, tongue pincers like this out the window um, rather than sticking their hand out for her to take their hand. So yeah, that's, that's a living tradition. That is a living belief that people will still pass down. And that's the Banshee. The third being I'm going to talk about is the Selkie or the Roan. Now, Selkie and Roan each mean seal. Roan is the Irish language version of a seal. And what these beings were, were when they were in the water, they appeared as a seal. And when they came to shore, they almost shed their seal skin and became kind of a womanly female figure. And if anybody has seen the cartoon saloon, Aron Namara or Song of the Sea vid um, video or not video, film. If you've seen the Aron Namara film, you might have an idea of what I'm talking about. It is a fantastic film. So if you haven't seen it, I would definitely suggest going watching it. But in the story, there's a woman and she essentially is a selkie, she's a roan and she needs to return to the sea to take her seal form. And there's a lot of different folklore stories, folklore accounts of people, usually men, coming across a female figure at a water's edge at a shoreline and generally again she's combing her hair she has with her a mantle or kind of a skin and that can be used to control her now i am planning to do more of a video on that so i'm going to leave that there for today however selkies or roans are also another different being under the she or fairy umbrella. There are many other different beings that I could talk about but in the interest in keeping this video short and sweet and just kind of covering the fundamentals I might leave that for another video. So fair folk fundamental number two is what is in a name. So as I said at the start of this video we're not going to be really using the f word to describe these beings and why that is is as I've already kind of mentioned, when you're saying the word fairy, what tends to come to mind is a little tiny Tinkerbell with wings and magical sparkly dust and <laughs> not really what we're talking about here. As I've described three examples of different good folk beings that we have in the Irish tradition, that's not really what we're dealing with. So it's kind of a diminutive, diminished and disrespectful word to use when you're referring to them. Now, it is a word that is commonly used 
but that doesn't necessarily always make something correct. So I have some alternatives that we can use, which are Nadini Ella or the other crowd or the other people. And this is something that is used quite a lot, Nadini Ella. You also have Nadini Ushla or the noble people or the gentry is also what they're referred to. And it's just kind of as a mark of respect. What tickles me sometimes is the fact that they're called Nadini Ushla. And if you've ever been on a train in Ireland and heard the train announcement right at the start of the journey, they're Donascuelga or in Irish at the start. And this is what they sound like. <laughs> So ear and road and every time you have a train journey, just FYI, you're not only welcoming the honourable people on board your trains, you're also maybe inviting the good folk. You also have Nadini Maha or the good people or the good folk. Another alteration on this is the good neighbours which is something that I've definitely heard my grandparents say growing up and even still to this day sometimes the good neighbours will be mentioned. You also have the fair folk which is kind of a more anglicised version and um, the gentry which would be like Dini Ushla, um, the Dini She and the Ace She. Now there is a little bit of a debate between whether they like or don't like the use of the word she. Personally, I find the use of the word she can be a little bit confusing sometimes. So she can mean one of these beings. It can also mean the area or the dwelling where they live. So a she is also referred to as a fairy mound. So Dini she would be the people of the fairy mounds and the ace she would almost be like the the higher she. So you can see how it gets a little bit confusing. Personally, I try and stick with the good folk, the good neighbours, Nadini Maha, and kind of leave it at that. So I hope that makes sense in why we don't use the F word and also giving you different ways in which you can address them or talk about them without using the F word. Fair folk fundamental number three is their likes and their dislikes. So Starting off with their likes, they tend to like things that are sweet and this is something that was always told to me as I was growing up. So things like honey, um, sweet things like cakes, my granddad would always say that they liked cakes and offerings like that. Also there is documented evidence of them liking tobacco particularly when it comes to beings like the puka who has a pipe so obviously he'd like tobacco to put into the pipe and um, there's also milk and cream so there's a lot of folkloric evidence of them liking cream or getting their dew with milk cream and butter particularly is left out for as an offering for them quite a bit um basically dairy dairy but specifically milk cream or butter also, they like puchin. Now, if you don't know what puchin is, puchin is a distilled potato alcoholic beverage. When done correctly and illegally, for legal reasons I have to say that, when it's done correctly in the Irish traditional way, it's around about 90%, so 180 proof alcohol you can get legal versions of puchin which is around about 66 percent some of them would be 50 percent and you can get them from certain distilleries in ireland but puchin would be one of the things that people leave out as offerings they also very much like gold so there are folkloric stories and accounts of people being given gold by the good folk or giving gold to the good folk so yeah that's maybe where the whole pot of golds and leprechauns thing came from. Who knows? Now onto things that they do not like. So they don't like dirt. 
dirt and human waste. So when it comes to dirty water, messy houses, things of that nature, they don't like it. There are folklore practices and folk practices around throwing out water. So if you were throwing out dirty water at the back or the front of your house or wherever you're throwing dirty water, you typically would basically kind of give them a warning just in case you splashed any of them. Um, this might get a little bit gross, but there's also folklore accounts of them specifically not liking human waste. So fecal matter, urine, that kind of thing. And what used to happen to protect specifically children against this is there are accounts of actually bathing children in urine to protect them from being taken by the good folk. You can't make this stuff up, you really can't. Um, also other things that they tend not to like are iron. So remember earlier when I mentioned about the banshee taking back her comb and people would have an iron tongs from the fire and usually hand her out the comb with the tongs. That's why. She doesn't really like iron. Um, none of them really do. Um, iron is within a lot of, of the protections, the charms of keeping them away and keep them, keeping them um, away from you and yourself protected. There's also things like fire. So apparently they don't like fire. Iron and fire was a combination that people would use to protect against them as well, often to quite lethal and detrimental effects. There's also foxglove, so apparently they don't like foxglove, according to our folklore. Foxglove is also poisonous, so I'm not sure if that has anything to do with it, but it is interesting to note that they are, that foxglove is poisonous. And also there's accounts of them not liking holy water. Now, I'm not sure if that is specifically Christian influence there, but it is in the folklore account, so I said I'd include it in the video. So fair folk fundamental number four, all the alliteration. So number four is fairy trees or fairy bushes. Now, when it comes to fairy trees, it's something that in Ireland, although a lot of people will say, I don't believe in them, the lone trees on farms are rarely cut down and rarely disturbed. The bushes on the sides of roads where motorways need to be built are often protected. The roads are built around them and there are accounts of these spots becoming accident black spots. I'll put a link in the description below to a couple of accounts of these accident black spots. Eddie Linehan is also someone who has done extensive work in trying to conserve and preserve and really be an activist to protect these bushes, particularly in County Clare when a motorway was being installed. And essentially what a fairy tree is, it's a solitary tree growing on its own in a field sometimes on a ring fort. Usually it's a hawthorn tree or a white thorn tree. Generally it will look a little bit more twisted and deformed than a general tree. And generally farmers will tend not to disturb them. Now there are many accounts of farmers and other people whose land that these trees tend to be on of just not disturbing them. There's also folkloric accounts of people saying, I don't believe in all that, I'm just going to do it. And then very bad things happening to those people. So whether you believe it or whether you don't believe it, that's really up to you. However, there is a very strong belief still in Ireland regarding these trees, regarding these beings and the protection of these trees and of their dwellings. You know, it's better to be safe than sorry. My own granddad had a story that he used to tell us of when he was a little boy. He disturbed a fairy ring. Now a fairy ring is usually, and there are folkloric accounts of fairy rings, there's just not as many as the trees or bushes. 
but he was playing with his football one night in a field or one evening in a field and it was starting to get dark and he kicked his ball and it rolled down a hill and went into a fairy ring. A fairy ring is usually a ring of mushrooms or flowers that have kind of randomly appeared in a ring form. Um, usually in a, in a full ring. So if you see like a half moon, it's probably not a fairy ring. But if you see a full one, it probably is. So maybe just leave it alone. But anyway, he kicked his ball. It went into the ring and he went in to get it, not realizing what he was after doing. And he picked up the ball, looked down and saw where he was. He left and went home pretty much straight away. That evening, he tried to go to sleep and every time he lay down in his bed, he felt thorns in his bed or thorns in his back. And every time he got up and looked at his bed to check, there was nothing there. So he went to find his dad. He spoke to his dad about it and said, I, there's thorns in my bed, I, I can't go to sleep. And... His dad checked his bed. There was no actual physical thorns in his bed. And he then asked him, what did you do? Because he hadn't mentioned anything about the fairy ring, anything about kicking the football to his dad that evening when he came home. So he told his dad what happened. He was then immediately told to make cakes, to make little kind of what we would call fairy cakes or cupcakes as an offering to apologize and basically try and get back in their good books and he made the cakes that evening I think he didn't sleep because he couldn't sleep so he stayed up making the cakes the next morning he went and made an offering at the edge of the ring where he had disturbed it and then that night everything was fine and he could go asleep but ever since I was very small he would warn me against picking flowers if they appeared in a circle or disturbing any kind of circle so yeah that's a belief that I grew up with that's a practice that I grew up with and it's very much a reverence for these beings that I grew up with and that I carry with me so that brings me on to fair folk fundamental number five which is the final one and that is Dini August Nadini Ella or people and the good folk so as I've covered already there are many different folkloric accounts of the good folk tricking people like the puka, warning of people dying like the banshee, coming across people, hurting people, helping people. And it's not only that they help people, but often they need help from people. So there's a couple of different stories where they've actually needed help from people. And often these revolve around them inviting someone in to play the music for the evening, to be their entertainment. Also, there's accounts of them reaching out to a ban fasa or a wise woman or woman of knowledge or a ban leish, which would be like a medicine, a woman of medicine, not a medicine woman, because that's its own tradition and it's not an Irish tradition. But reaching out to these woman healers in communities that typically would have acted as midwives and essentially asking them to help deliver a baby in the other world. Often when you help them, you do get rewarded. So these women would be rewarded with particular healing powers, and cures and things like that. Um, musicians would be rewarded with a tune that nobody had heard or maybe an extra special talent for playing music. And there's lots and lots of different stories like that in the folklore. And I'm gonna try and link a couple of stories below in the description. And I really would urge you to do your own research on this as well. I can only cover so much in this video. There are so many other creators that are looking at the good folk and really putting in really good information into the interwebs. 
I'm going to link a few down below. There are some blog posts and there's also some TikTokers who I will uh, give a special mention to as well. The reason I wanted to make this video was A, because it was kind of requested of me by both people on the internet who are following my content and enjoying it and I thank you very much for engaging and also as a little bit of a service into making sure that the correct information is getting out there because there is so much incorrect information particularly about these specific being, beings 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 um But it seems to be almost trendy recently to talk about these beings and they're not a trend. They're very much a living tradition. They're a tradition that I grew personally grew up with and it's a belief that I grew up with and a taught reverence and taught respect that I grew up with for these beings. And I think that's being lost a little bit in the trends and the trends around these little tinkerbell like fairies that are certainly not what I'm talking about in this video and not what's in the Irish tradition. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope you enjoy the resources that I'm going to put in the description as well. And that's about it. If you have any questions on anything that I raised in the video, do ask me in the comments. I might do further videos on them I just wanted to do a kind of a general catch-all because it had been requested of me and I also just wanted to add my voice and my experiences and my own tradition from my family into the mix and to try and again put out good information that's reliable and also to share some resources so you can do your own research you can find out what the stories are because again I can't cover everything though I will probably try. <laughs> so, slong of all, I will see you in the next video.